So say you wake up in the morning and you start to worry. That's what usually the mind does. You either start to worry about the future or you regret something from the past. <laughs> That's just what most people do. Did you push record? Thanks for tuning back into Second Act TV. Carla Rieger is with us for a second segment on talking about recreating your life after 50. Carla is a communication, a mindset, and business growth expert. She's written six books, has 20 online learning programs, and she helps people like me and you discover our wisdom and turn it into wealth. <laughs> so on our last segment, Carla, as we said, we talked about that process of identifying, you know, what it is that you're passionate about and that you can share with the world and that people will pay you for. In a way, that's the easy part because where people stumble, in my opinion, is making it happen because they don't believe they can. And that's obviously as a result of confidence and fear. Today I want to talk about overcoming the fear of getting out there. Yeah, let's uh yeah, let's dive in there because I would say that's about 98% of whether you're going to be successful or not if you can deal with that. And you know, for years I was helping people be speakers or coaches, sharing their wisdom uh and turning it into wealth. And I noticed that if I didn't address those things, that all the strategies in the world didn't make any difference because they didn't believe in themselves or they were too afraid of failure. And so I actually went back to school and I did some very in-depth coach certification trainings and really, really focus the majority of my coaching on those things. Because once you get those, not only does it help them turn their wisdom into wealth, but they start to have better relationships and they're nicer to themselves and their health improves. And it sort of became a one-stop shop. And so I love this topic. So yeah, let's dive into this topic. <laughs> well, one of the things that I know about the topic uh, is that procrastination uh, is actually a huge sign of fear of failure. Would you agree? Yeah, absolutely. So how do you how do you tell people to deal with that? The first thing I think is really important is it's totally normal to fear of failure, right? And so if you stop beating yourself up and calling yourself lazy because you're not getting on with this goal that you set, that's the first step. Like it's totally normal. You have to kind of treat the part of you that's afraid of failure kind of like you would a toddler, right? That's just afraid, right? Because we all have this fearful side of ourselves and some people have a hard time. No, I'm not afraid of failing, but you know, it's just totally normal and human. Because if you do fail, if you think about it from the survival state of mind, right, if we look at it from a brain perspective, uh, it's very hard for people to get out of their comfort zone if they fear uh, rejection, failure, mistakes, anything like that. And so, if, but it, as soon as you know that's the game going on in the brain, you, you know, our brains are plastic and you can start to rewrite neuro, new neural pathways. So you, you develop the, for anyone who studied meditation, you develop the witness state of mind that can jump out of the survival brain and go into the higher mind, the neocortex and watch what's going on and be compassionate with the fearful side and, and start to overlay new beliefs. So for, I'll give a practical example. So say you wake up in the morning and you start to worry. That's what usually the mind does. You either start to worry about the future or you regret something from the past. <laughs> That's just what most people do. And so all you do in that moment is you, you instead start thinking about something in your future that you want and, and go there like you're there in the moment. Like, for example, I'm working with uh, a client who's going to be speaking at this big event of women entrepreneurs and she's building her, you know, expertise. And she wakes up in the morning. She, and of course, all she's thinking is I'm going to bomb. People are going to hate it because <laughs> left to our own devices, that's what we'll do. And she's a great speaker, right? She's all, she's very good normally, but of course that's what even top speakers I work with 
and coaches, they'll do that to themselves. So then she goes, no, no, no. Okay. There I am on stage and I see the faces of everybody in my audience. I have my clicker in my hand and I'm feeling confident. So she's just using her imagination because imagination and intention are very powerful. Like if we could watch your brain building neural pathways, your intention and your imagination does that, right? Like if you think of painting a picture, you think about what you're going to paint first in your mind and then you paint it, right? You don't usually. So it's the same thing. You're painting a picture of how it's going to go. And like I'm breathing and I'm smiling and I see people in the audience smiling and I hear them laughing. And then I hear amazing round of applause as I finish, right? So she does that. She just switches over to that and she plays a little game with herself because the survival brain wants to chew on something and it'll chew, it'll catastrophize if you don't give it something else to chew on, which is a positive. It's kind of like another metaphor I like to use is, you know, like if your puppy is choosing, it's chewing your favorite shoe, <laughs> but if you try to pull the shoe away from the puppy, it'll just like grab on, right? And hold on. So what do you have to do to get the puppy to drop the shoe. Give him a treat. <laughs> yeah, give him a treat. Give him a treat or a ball, right? Give him something else that's good for it to focus on, and it'll do that. So you kind of want to look at your, instead of beating yourself up, just realize you're dealing with a primitive part of the brain, a childlike part of the brain, and you have to just be a very nurturing, loving parent with yourself. And eventually you just start to write, it's like new train tracks for the mind's creative energy. And eventually you just start to default that and you wake up in the morning and you're always thinking about the good stuff. Yeah. Well, it's, it's very interesting. And some people say, oh, yeah, I can, but how can I possibly, I mean, I have, you know, I'm worried about failing because of my, you know, money. What if I, what if, what if, what if? And that, that's tough, tough to get over. I mean, it's, you made a great point, you know, focus on where you want to go. But, the, but how do you deal with the real, you know, the practical things, the, the real worries, <laughs> whether they're good for you or not, how do you deal with that? Yeah, I'm glad that you gave the word what, what if. I actually have this whole process called the what ifs worksheet and I'll put a link to it in the show notes so people can get it because that's how we catastrophize. We go, what if I run out of money? What if I fail? What if I don't do a good job, right? So then what you do is you write, what if I do bring in enough money? What if I do... Um, do it well. And what if I'm a success? So that's the second part. And then the third part of it is what if I run out of money and it's okay. I just learn from the experience and I move on. Or what if I fail and it's okay. I learn from the experience. It's I move on, right? Anything that calms the survival brain down, because if you're worried about something, I'm sure people have heard this, what you focus on grows and you start to see the world in terms of how you're going to create that. Do you know what I mean? Absolutely. Yeah. The reticular activating system is if you're thinking of buying a, a Subaru or whatever, that's the only car you see on the road, right? <laughs> so if you're thinking about, I'm going to run out of money, you'll look for how you're going to run out of money and you'll create that. Right. But if you look for what if I make lots of money, all of a sudden you're thinking about ways to create money or you're thinking of ways to reorganize your finances. And I, so that's one tool that I find people really appreciate. Some people go so far as to write the negative what ifs on a separate piece of paper and burn it as a way of symbolically just letting it go. People love that for some reason, yeah, if you yeah. have a fireplace. Yeah, that's, we just talked about something similar in another segment, but for, about forgiveness and, and that kind of thing. We're, cut, we're starting to come to the end. Uh, what, what I want to ask you, you know, one, are, are there any other particular tips? And then two, I do want to mention that, you know, we, when we give advice, we, <laughs> I totally believe in everything you just said, but it's hard. It's very hard. And I want to say to our viewers that don't beat yourself up if you keep going, oops, I hit my microphone. If you keep going back 
to, you know, all of a sudden the negative stuff creeps up. The awareness of catching yourself and then, you know, going, bringing yourself back to the positive. That's how you, I think, and in, in, in my own process, how you realize you're changing for the better and are able to attract more of what you want into your life. So, but I'm going to let you close out. Yeah, absolutely. It's a process and it is hard at first. It creates cognitive dissonance when you've been practicing something for 50 years and now you're going to try something different. It's like trying to build a very weak muscle and it's like, oh, <laughs> so that's why having some kind of support, whether it's a support group or coach or ongoing, you know, watching YouTube videos that inspire you is super important because you will default to the negative almost 90, you know, 90 percent of the time if you don't have that right. right well and then the what if what if this great idea you have can work that is a, a great thing to focus on i'm gonna i'm gonna do the what if what if it works <laughs> but i can actually you. use that in my life right now <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah carla thank you so much we will link to all of your information our previous segment and i want to hold you over uh, for one more segment talking about the other piece of this which is confidence uh, we've overcome we need to overcome our fear and we need to build our confidence so we'll talk to you in our next segment of second act tv <music> Please be sure to subscribe to our channel. The button is right over here. Just click on through to YouTube. And when you see the little bell right next to the subscribe button, hit that too. We'll notify you every time we launch a new video. See you next time.